Welcome in. It's the Positively Petland Show, 800 KXIC, Iowa City. I'm Jay Caper and Ron Salzer here with Petland of Iowa City, and we are talking pets, as we always do right around this time. And we encourage you to check out the podcast page, listen to the show whenever you'd like, or maybe you already are listening to the show at 1 o'clock in the morning while you're working out or something. That's the great thing about the podcast page. You can make it fit your schedule. If you'd like to listen to the traditional style on the radio, we love that too. And that's Sunday mornings in the 9 o'clock hour. Maybe you're heading off to church. Maybe you're heading out to the grocery store, out with the kids, trying to escape the heat this weekend. Whatever the case may be, we appreciate you hanging out with us. How you I, doing, Ron? I'm doing good. I have converted totally to podcast. Have like, you? I listen to your show in the morning, mm -hmm. so I get the live thing going, and I'm in the car while that's happening. But then I switch over to uh, podcasts, and mm -hmm. I listen to all sorts of different fun stuff. You can get apps now on your phone that'll yeah. organize them for I you, download them too. automatically for you. Yep, I love podcasts, too. And one of the other things, and, and thanks for the, allowing me to kind of promote uh, the, the fact because I that was one of the things I know from the beginning when I got into this business a lot of people say oh your radio that that's gonna go away but the the very first thing you said is the exact reason why there's always going to be a place for it is that you said I listen to you for the live thing right and mm -hmm. why and what why did you say it? because you want to know what's happening now you want to know the yep. news you want to know traffic you that's know exactly I tune you on and I want to know is everything okay that's yeah that's right and so that's why that is always going to have a role, but other things. If you want to hear us, you know, a, pod, a sports podcast or other things that you, that uh, you can listen to at your own time, that's when you can do that. Uh, you, and, and sports is another reason um, that live stuff people love live sports. Oh, right, too, you is, can't you know, watch. You don't want to watch the the Super Bowl the day after. No, you know? no so, nothing fun. But but there's certainly a big role for a show just like this one. The pet show is a show that doesn't have to listen to it. doesn't have to be live, but you can get great information and maybe even rewind it. Listen to us something like we talk the training and the different stuff we do. You can take that and, you know, listen at your own leisure, which mm -hmm. is great. So we encourage you to listen in however you may do so. And today, what are we going to talk about on the show today, Ron? We're going to talk about the soft-coated Wheaton. Is that the right breed for you? The we're going to talk soft-coated Wheaton. Wheaton. Okay. And then we're going to go into hydration on dogs and cats and just understand what it looks like. We're in the middle of this heat wave. This is a key time to go, hey, are, you know, hey, spot, are you getting drinking enough? You know, and all that kind of stuff. So we're going to go and look at what are signs of dehydration. You know, why is that even important for a dog? Uh, so really understand that and then how to keep your dog hydrated. Then we're going to go into aquarium decorating. So hmm. plenty of hydration there. And we're going to, you know, did you, do you have that aquarium sitting in your house? And you're like, this is just not what I envisioned. We're going to go through some simple steps, decorating 101, on how to start that aquarium going in the right direction as far as decorating goes. And then conclude with Stella and Chewy's tantalizing turkey meal mixers. Um, it's dehydrated, freeze-dried uh, kibble. But I love to mix this in with the normal kibble I have for my dogs and cats. And I just put a little bit on there. And you can take your dog from this again. You know, they look back up at you. You kidding me? How many times are you going to feed this kibble? You put this, a little sprinkling of this uh, freeze-dried product on there, they just like dive into the bowl. And so it helps them in so many ways. We're going to talk about that. But your dog and cat are going to love this. Nice, and a way to spice up the food a little bit there. So we'll talk about that, all those topics. That's going to be coming up here in just uh, a little bit on the Positively Petland Show on 800 Kicks. I see you can check out the Positively Petland Show every Sunday morning at around this time and on our podcast page, and check out the pet store, Petland of Iowa City, located on Lower Muscatine, and they open up at noon today if you're listening on Sunday. Cool well, 72 degrees all day long yeah, in that store. Yeah, there you go. Most days you're open up at... Uh, well, at 10. 10, though. But 10 to 9, Monday through Saturday, Sunday, noon until 6. Very good. And $5 nail trims. You can't beat that. Buy 10, get one free for their dog and cat foods. Uh, so you can check that out, too. All right. So now it's time for Big Voice Guy. Oh, boy. Put some clothes on, Big Voice Guy. Jeez. He's got a Speedo on again. It's time for the amazing <laughs> pet story so of the week. So that. sweaty and gross. Why does he do that to us? Uh, at he least touched me on the way out. That's gross. Don't be rubbing against me like so that. So hairy, too. Oh, shit. Yuck. All right. Well, today for the amazing pet story of the week, uh, the last living 9-11 search and rescue dog has passed away. Oh, and, that's yeah, sad. And so I thought it'd be worth it to, to bring it here because, uh, boy, 
talk about amazing dogs that helped out in a very tough time. Uh, the Brett Bretagne, let's say let's say Bretagne is how you spell it or how you pronounce it. Bretagne passed away, lived uh, for 16 years, dedication, loyalty, changed the lives of so many. And Bretagne is believed to be the last known living search and rescue dog that worked at Ground Zero as members of Task Force One. She, uh, her and her handler, Denise Corliss, had a very intense first deploy deployment. They joined nearly 100 other search and rescue dogs to find people that were trapped in the rubble. And uh, they, had, they did save people, that, you know, digging through that. And they were putting their own lives at risk, too, on top of a stable rubble, not knowing if it was going to collapse, uh, you know, so that was dangerous enough as uh, and themselves. But uh, Bretagne has passed away, the last known 9-11 dog. And that's our amazing pet story of the week. Amazing search and rescue dogs, not just for 9-11, but all over the place. I'm always amazed by the work that they do and how, like we talk about, you always use that um, example. They smell like we see. Mm -hmm. So underneath that rubble, they get a scent of someone who's alive or they can hear probably. They hear better than us, too, uh, or different tones. Uh, and I'm sure they can hear people underneath the rubble, too. So, uh, Britannia, rest in peace. And that is the amazing pet story of the week. It's time to take a break. When we come back, we talk about the Wheaton. It's our breed of the week, right? Soft-coated Wheaton. Yes. And then we're going to talk about those other topics, too. Anything else you want to mention as we go to break, Ron? Repellent of Iowa City, located across from Marketplace Mall, that Lucky's Market, if you haven't tried them, that's a great great store to try. Um, then come visit Petland, where, where you're going to have all the fun of playing and, you know, kind of answering the question, is this the right pet for me? You know, is a dog the right one? You know, that's not always the case. I've got a busy life and all that. Maybe it's a bunny, a guinea pig, a hamster, a fish, a reptile. Reptiles are one of the largest growing, or that's the fastest growing industry right now. And so that might even be something you want to look into, the cute little bearded dragon or something like that. So we're all about fun in the store. Speaking of reptiles, I've got a story to tell you when we come back about something that we saw, and it involves a very large snake. I'll tell you about that. Ew. Coming up here, yeah. After this, 800 KXIC. <laughs> Now don't 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 let me forget to tell that story after we come back from right. the um, preview or our promo here. It's uh going through the twelfth. It's twelfth. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. In three, two, one. 800 KXIC Morning Host, Jay Capron with Ron Salzard from Petland of Iowa City. What are we going to talk about on the show, Ron? We're going to talk about the soft-coated Wheaton Terrier. Is this large breed, non-shedding dog the right breed for you? Jay's going to talk about some scary snake story. I don't even understand, so you got to check that one out. We're then going to talk about hydration. We're in the middle of a heat wave. How to keep your pets hydrated. We're going to also talk about decorating your aquarium. Oh, it just doesn't look like it used to. And then Stella and Chewy's uh, tantalizing turkey meal mixtures. We're going to talk about a way to spice up your dog and cat's food. It's a Positively Petland show Sunday mornings at 9 and at KXIC.com on the podcast page. Perfect. All right. And here we go. In three, two, one. <laughs> Welcome back. It's the Positively Petland Show, 800 KXIC, Iowa City. I'm Jay Capron, and I hope you're doing well. It's time to talk more about pets. Having fun with this, always. One of the more fun shows we have here on KXIC. We talk about our furry friends, our scaled friends, our feathered friends at times, and we always have a good time with it. The Positively Petland Show on KXIC. And before we get to the soft coated Wheaton and all the other topics scary we're going to talk about, a scary up. story. Yeah, it's it's not it's not for everyone. Uh, that's <laughs> for sure. And that so was turn the yeah. turn your dial down if you're grossed out by seconds. nature, I guess. Uh, but no, this is this was actually a really cool learning moment. We were at the Nyabi Zoo uh, recently, and they have pythons and they have boa constrictors and all that. Well, if you don't know much about that, especially the large 
um, snakes when they get real big, not the little ones, the little smaller ones that you sell at the store. Uh -huh. um, some of these, the, the, the ones in nature specifically will get humongous and they don't have to eat all that often because when they eat, they'll eat one thing and then they'll spend a good couple weeks digesting it and they don't have to eat again for a while. In fact, they said there was one snake there that only eats every three to four weeks. I thought was interesting. Once a month, it'll eat. Yeah. And then I've had a snake. I've heard a snake that only ate once. Well, in this situation, once a year. I didn't. I'm like, I don't even get that. Yeah, but. that would have to be a huge meal. Um. So <laughs> anyway, uh, the 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 luck of the draw is that we happened to be there when it was feeding time, and it only happens every three or four weeks uh, for the snakes in in the particular area we were at. So we lucked out. I mean, we just we were there at the right time because it only takes like two minutes for them to do this because it's a quick process and I'll, I'll talk about it in a minute. Uh, but they warned everybody, which was good. Uh, you know, the, the reptile person at the zoo said, listen, it's, it's feeding time. So if you're not, that's not something not you want to this. Well, might what do you think away. my seven year old was all, I want to go see. Oh yeah. He was all about it. And so my, we happened to be there with my mom. She's not all about that. So she sat outside uh, and my uh, wife, Devin, she was okay with it. She was apprehensive. Is Jake still with us? That, that, Jack. Jack. Yeah. Is Jack still with us? That's yeah, what I want to yeah. know. They weren't feeding him the Jack, which is good. But no, they had, so they had these mice and they actually, the mice were not alive, um, which made it a little easier because seeing the squealing, you know, that can be a bit much too for people. You're getting a little graphic. Huh? I know. But anyway. They, they make it seem alive. So they put it on the, the they have like a clip and then they'll shake it and stuff. So anyway, we watched the feeding process and it was unbelievable. Like there were probably 30 people that crowded around to watch and stuff. And huh. uh, a lot of kids, uh, you know, and they got to see nature and, you know, it can be a lot to, to, to see, but it, you know, it is, it's, it's nature. And it's just, you know, I know pe that's part of the reason you put the snakes in the back of the store. Cause you don't want people, to be grossed out and not come in your store but for some people uh they're just captivated amazed by it and i was one of those kids i was always into nature um still i am i still really appreciate love to fish and be out in nature and stuff and um i used to have frogs and I mm -hmm. love feeding them crickets and stuff yeah, and yeah some people just aren't into that but it i thought it was really cool and to, and to watch these huge uh snakes do what they do i thought it was pretty amazing so yeah uh, if you ever want to see uh feeding we feed daily in our yeah, store you have to keep, yeah, keep so, them fed too yeah and it's i there are a lot yeah you like you said a lot of people are really interested in that if you ever want to see that you're welcome to ask us if it's feeding time and we'll we'll demonstrate show you yep. if you're not into that kind of a thing we'll show you how the fish eat there you go <laughs> you just sprinkle a little flake on there and watch them go we love to have the kids interact in that way and and you know they, they get a kick out of that you know we as adults have done it and seen it and all that kind of stuff but to a child that's I'm taking care of them, you know, and that's an important uh, thing for them to experience. Yeah, they got to eat, you know, uh, that's the thing with the circle of life and all that good stuff. The they they got it. The snakes got to eat, too. So anyway, that was my story. I just thought it was kind of fun. And we I was so you can uh, turn your dials back up now. Yeah, there you go. So hopefully that didn't gross anybody out too uh, while you're headed to breakfast this morning. Uh, but anyway, well, let's talk about the soft coat of Wheaton. What's that all about? So the roots of the soft coat of Wheaton, oh, they only trace back to 200 years. I thought they would go much further back than that. How do you get a soft coat of Wheaton that quickly? Yeah. I just to me, it seems like they've really worked on it. But uh, some more history. The term Irish Terrier, which is when you go back to Ireland, where the soft coated Wheaton Terrier originates from, they just called in an Irish Terrier over there. Um, but the the history is is kind of interesting. Uh, the term Irish Terrier was was in those days a collective referring to all the working earth dogs of Ireland. Uh, few doubt that the long legged Terrier breeds in Ireland came about as a result of statutes passed by Ireland's Houses of Parliament in the 1600s. So this is the government kind of, you know, inflicting themselves on the community and everything, making it illegal for any but wealthy landowners to keep or own such any such hound or spaniel. What they're doing is, is they had specific breeds that they want uh, to be owned by only rich people. You know, th that whole classic tale that we hear so much about um, is not anything new today. It's, you know, this is human behavior, I guess, uh, over time. Um, so then the consequence, uh, as a consequence, 
Irish tenant farmers because you, you can never keep us down. We're always going to do something, you know. <laughs> so uh, as a council, the Irish tenant farmers who weren't allowed to have these certain breeds developed dogs that they could legally keep and breed the soft coated Wheaton Terrier among them. So that one came out as a result of that. The first two recorded soft-coated Wheaton Terriers arrived in the United States in 1947. Um, they, uh, it was two families that did it. So it wasn't even in the United States for, it hasn't been for very long. And when it came to the United States, it really didn't make a big splash. And I don't know if it was because of, you know, oh, it's the farmer's dog kind of a thing. I, I wouldn't think it was because, gosh, Labrador Retriever, Golden Retriever, mm -hmm. you know, those came that route as well. But this one just didn't latch on and just has slowly become more and more popular as we go along. I think most people would say, I don't even know what a soft-coated Wheaton Terrier is. I, yeah, I'm trying to picture it in my head. So, so picture, this is a uh, one of the few large breeds. Uh, it is a non-shedding dog, so it sheds just a little bit is, is what that means. Um, it starts off in a brown, uh, black, uh, cream mixture color. Mm. Uh, looks really, really pretty. I just realized, I was like, I'm, gonna, I'm trying to picture my head, and there's one. We got one right here, yeah. But it is a puppy, and it is kind of curled up, so yeah, I can't really they get are, can't, they're, not, they're sleeping. Yeah, I must have really worn them out yeah. this morning playing. They really are just uh, snoozing away. So they start off in that those brown tones uh, with black highlights and all, but then they switch to over time as they uh, get into adulthood into a cream coat so it's a interesting thing that happens there um, more on what does AKC say about him the poor man's hound served as the tenant farmers household as a general all-purpose farm dog he uh, herded and guarded the sheep <laughs> killed the vermin and warned of intruders uh, keen of scent a Wheaton might often be found with his master out for the hunt, bringing down small game, perhaps even helping in the kitchen by turning the spit. Huh? Isn't that funny? That's that funny. Uh, so you're getting a feel for this, uh, the behavior of this dog. This dog wants to be around people. And, yeah, and so it to, truly is part of the family. Yeah, you know, and you, I love the heritage yeah, of I'm it. Getting, I'm getting that vibe just by hearing you describe how much they were helping out and, you know, around the farm. It was yeah. uh, truly a member of the family. That's so let's cool. go into a little, finally, just a little bit more of, you know, what is it like living with a Wheaton? Wheaton temperament is unique, combining the alert intelligence of a terrier. So terriers tend to be more alert, a little more active and all that, with the steadiness of a working dog, a quick, lively, affectionate dog. The Wheaton retains his puppy exuberance and medium to high energy level all his life. So don't get this dog thinking you're going to have uh, a mellow dog. Mm. Um, he can thrive in the city or the country so long as he is close to his people and receives ample daily exercise. So exercise, loves to be around people. Um, if you're into hunting, you know, this one can go into the hunting side of things as well. That's the way it was bred. Um, today, uh, we have a mini woodle so soft-coated wheat and terrier mixed with a miniature poodle so it's going to be a smaller version is what it ends up being real cute uh right now it's you know meek and being a puppy and all that kind of stuff but it will have definitely that energy but it'll be on the smaller side compared to the soft-coated wheaton so that right is the soft-coated Wheaton. Is it the right breed for you? I that's, love it. that's for you to answer with that information. So we are in the middle of a heat wave, it, and we're all loving it. Or are we hating it no, already? I, I, I wouldn't go that far, Ron, because there's people who absolutely hate this hot weather. I, I like whatever weather we're supposed to have. I just want it to the extreme. If it's going to get cold, I want it snow and cold. If it's going to get hot, get some hot. I <laughs> went to Vegas for the first time, and it was blazing hot down there and i'm like i want to just bake you yeah. know just different heat though for sure yeah they yeah. said that it's still hot it is but it does that, that without the humidity there's a it does it does a different yeah. feel to it then it's like it is a little bit like being in an oven down there you, like that the hot, dry, hot, heat, dry yeah. air yeah. but the you know when you got because it we say it's muggy here but if you go down south uh mississippi you know those louisiana that that's a whole different type of heat too because it's just 
you can almost wear it. It's so hot. It's right. stickiness. And so heat. that gets us right into. So we shed heat through evaporation through sweating. And so it's just, uh, if you uh, went to back to physics, uh, maybe a little chemistry, throw in a little thermodynamics in there, <laughs> and uh, you find out that as water evaporates, goes from a liquid to a vapor, it actually takes some heat with it. And that's how we cool down. So we sweat, that liquid then evaporates, takes some of the heat away, and we go, oh, it's a little cool. Put a fan on us, and it uh, accelerates that process. So we feel even cooler. And that's, so that's why we like the fan. Mm -hmm. So that's how we moderate our temperature. So we also will go under trees and things like that or in the house or whatever. Uh, as it gets humid, uh, you just said it's like wearing it. Well, that's because you evaporate less because it's becoming saturated as a gas. And so you're having problems getting rid of your heat and it gets mm. more uncomfortable. So now let's talk about dogs. Dogs, when they, they don't sweat, and we were joking off air that, you know, if they did sweat, they probably, we probably wouldn't like dogs because <laughs> they'd be stinkier than they already are. And you're like, oh, I can't have that foul smell around me too long. So it's a good thing, I guess. Um, so they don't sweat, so, but they have to moderate their temperature like we do. If, if things get overheated, they got to get rid of it some way. Same process, but a different place. And that is, is they can only get rid of heat through their mouth. We do the same thing, but we also have sweat working for us. So now as they're panting, uh, that's how we go, oh, you must be hot because they come up to us and their mouth is open, the tongue is out and they're panting. What they're doing is evaporating a liquid into a vapor that takes that heat away and they exhale it and then that gets the heat away from them. So that's how they get rid of uh, temperature. Um, but we just learned also that they're getting rid of moisture as a result. That's why hydration is so critical uh, for our dogs and cats and mammals in general. Uh, so some key things, we'll talk about some key things to look for as far as am, is my dog cat in trouble right now? And then we'll talk about, well, what are some ways to prevent that? And what do I do if I get into trouble? So uh, sunken eyes uh, is something that you're going to see starting to happen. Um, it's just like if we start dehydrating, we're going to lose weight, but we're also going to get skinny, you know, kind of a thing. So uh, sunken in eyes, uh, lethargy. So if they're lethargic uh, in their behavior, you know, they just are, yeah, gosh, you, are you tired? What's going on? You know, you, sh you normally are all active, you know, and just as kind of giving you that lethargic attitude something's not going right and the mouth is open and all that kind of stuff loss of appetite doesn't even want to eat spot you always eat what is going on here uh dry mouth if you you know check it out and if things are a little dry inside uh these are some key things to look for in your dog to look for signs of dehydration um if you are in any of these situations where hey things are going not in the right direction make sure you contact and and or bring your your dog or cat in to the veterinarian immediately um, because this could lead to some really uh, dire consequences and, and they'll put you know ivs and stuff whatever they feel appropriate to get going on if there. you're seeing that stuff it's probably far enough along right us, yeah. it's just like us if we're that bad yeah we need to be going you know see the, the paramedic the doctor uh to figure out how what's going on and how can i get better on it um now how do i prevent such things uh as dehydration and all these things um Obviously, a bowl of water and keeping that nice and uh, full all day long um, is, yeah, guess this is what I think 90% of us do. And that takes care of everything, just keeping that bowl full of water. Um, if your bowl is outside, your dog is a you know great outside dog, I'd be throwing some ice cubes in there. I've actually had uh, customers where they'll get multiple bowls. They'll, they'll put the water out there and keep, you know, okay, hydrate, you know, right now. But then they'll put a couple of bowls of frozen. They actually put the whole bowl in the freezer um, and froze it. You want to make it even more fun? Put some toys in there, some uh -huh. Nyla bones and some other things. And now as it thaws out, they have a cold toy to work with as well. And if it's like a rope, 
now it's cold and wet and some more ways to be hydrated um, all the way through the day. So uh, plenty of water all the time. Keep it cool. Don't let it get hot, you know, heat, heated up and all that kind of stuff with the sun. Keep it in the shade and all that. Um, another way to keep hydration going is a water bottle. Uh, so you've got, uh, let's say your dog is in the kennel. It's a puppy and it's, you know, it needs to be in the crib, you know, kind of a thing. You could literally put a water bottle. Um, I have people calling us now for the water bottles that we have in our store uh, that goes home with all of our puppies. And they, they actually, they go, that was the best water bottle ever. Had it for five years and it's time to replace that thing. And so they come in and get another one. So it's really interesting. We have one specialized for dogs um, and it works really well. So putting that on their kennel is going to be another source of water that they can go for. Uh, so many sources of water. We talked about toys and all, all that kind of stuff. Um, keeping your dog out of the sun, giving him some shaded area if it's an outside dog. Um, inside dogs, you know, if you don't have the air conditioning on, watch out because dehydration and, uh, and overheating can occur within that house as well. Um, the pooly, I have a neighbor with a pooly, and most of the summer that pooly, who, which has a lot of hair, um, ends up uh, spending a lot of time on the register where the air comes out, just like, give me some cool, you know, kind of a thing. Uh -huh. and, so you'll see them do those kind of things. Keep a fan on them. Um, for a lot of dogs, this is the great time to go to the groomer. Get them cut down. Susie's scheduled for her grooming on Friday. And the direction we're going to give the groomer, she's a Maltese poodle, is cut her down. Keep her cool. Um, so you can do that on your dog and, and bring them back to life. Um, I know of a family that has a Bernese Mountain dog, and they just noticed that the dog was lethargic. Uh, it was having, it just was not, there was no interest anymore, you know, in doing anything. Um, they knew, though, hydration was where it needed to be. It wasn't dehydrated or anything. They ended up going to the groomer, getting it groomed, uh, shaved it down to an inch or so, and when they got the dog back, it had a life that they not, had not seen for a month. And so they said, hey, from now on, we're going to make sure we keep that insulative layer a lot less insulative so that the dog can cool down quicker and easier, especially in these 90 degree temperatures that you have. So these are those are some suggestions, what to look for and what to do uh, to keep your dog hydrated. I love it. All right. Now, how about decorating the... Uh the uh, aquarium. The aquarium. So, did you get those? You know that tank. You got the fish. Hey, I put some gravel in there. I got you know the the filter and all that kind of stuff. And you stand back and you go, huh? That's not what I was looking for. Um, and that's the way I started too when I was younger. You know, mom and dad brought me over there, and you know, I want this, I want that, and you know, they came to a point. And they said, <clears throat> Ronnie, this is you know we've we've hit the budget, you know, and so I set it up and all that kind of stuff. <clears throat> that is typical. And so now over time, especially if you're trying to keep your child um, interested in that aquarium, get them interactive with them. So next time you're in Poutland, look for a decoration to add and you can decorate over time. It's not something you got to do all at once, um, especially the living plant side of things. You're going to get a small plant, uh, but over time it's going to grow into a, you know, a nice big uh, arrangement in your tank and getting you know multiple types of plants and all that. The first thing that I would suggest after you do your initial setup is put a nice background on the tank. We have backgrounds at the at our store where they give it life. You know, they it, whether it's a uh, looks like an infinity water or whether it's rocks and plants and sand. Uh, they even have jungle themes, which is kind of fun to put in the tank. So, you know, and, and again, what is your child or what do you like? You know, go crazy, have fun with it and put that background on it. We even have a special product that you put on it and it'll stick right to the back of your aquarium so that it looks as good as when you look at it um, uh, right in front of you. When you put it on the tank, you need a special adhesive so that you can see it and the fish can see it really clearly through the tank. So talk with us about that. So that's the first thing I would do. Second thing is, is get some rocks and some uh, wood structure in your uh, tank. We're just now getting, we, we had a, 
the casino come in and they cleaned us out of all of our uh, driftwood and everything, which was a nice thing. I appreciated that. Um, well, it allowed us to bring in, and we're going to be doing it uh, really shortly, I believe at the beginning of the week, we're going to have a ton more driftwood in our store. And we already have decorations in there, but driftwood, rock, um, we have some phenomenal rock that you can bring in there that when you put it underwater, it just glows and looks really pretty. Cool. Uh, slate and all that kind of stuff. So you start adding these things. Now that you got the rock formations and the wood formations, wood that actually sinks or is uh, fastened down so that it won't float, now start adding plants. If you're like, oh, I've tried that plant thing and they don't work, get some fake plants in there. There is some wonderful, colorful fake plants that you can bring into your aquarium. Make it look real pretty. Um, you can even take them out from time to time, clean them up and all that kind of stuff, make them look just brand new again and put them back in. So they're maintainable as, that, you know, as well. So just do it over time and just make it a project and, and have fun with it to decorate that tank. If you're looking for some ideas, ask our counselors in the store. Um, look for ideas. One of the best places I have found is uh, going on Google Images and I put aquariums. And uh, as I see what I like, I look for search terms that will do more of that. I then use that as a template for my own tank. Realize that most of those tanks you see on there, the plants have grown for six months, and so they're bigger now. Um, you're going to buy a small plant, and it's going to get bigger and all that. So it takes some time to grow into your tank, but that's also fascinating to learn about how to grow plants better in your tank and uh, all that kind of a thing. So that is my suggestion on how to decorate your tank. Very cool. Well, we are almost out of time, but we did leave enough time to talk about Stella and Chewies. This is a food... Uh, almost like an additive. It's something to make that kibble that you feed them all the time. Uh, and how many dog owners and cat owners out there don't think the same thing? It's like, man, that's the food they like, but we feed them the same thing all the time. This is a way to add something to it. And I'm guessing a little extra potent uh, vitamins and that kind of stuff too, right? Yeah. Is your dog one of those that's looking up at you when you put the food in there? Are you kidding me? You're giving me this again? Again? But you've picked that food out for whatever reason. And, and it's a you know good quality food. It's got all the essentials and all that. But, you know, hey, the dog or the cat are getting a, you know, a little bored with the whole thing. Mix it up with Stella and Chewy's meal mixers so these are dehyd this is de freeze dried kibble it, so your kibble that we normally feed is cooked and that cooks above 140 degrees it cooks out most of the enzymes and some of the nutrients and all that so the freeze dried comes at it and says hey look in our process we preserve those things as well as a lot of the taste and so you can mix a, a freeze-dried product, like a good quality product, like Stilla and Chewy's, into your existing meal. And I'm talking a little, you know, sprinkle over the top, uh, like you would seasoning your meals and stuff like that. And so put that in there, and you're going to not only get them going crazy over that food again, but they're also going to get some additional benefits. These are high in proteins, so that it's going to add protein to your dog or cat's diet. Um, if you've got that, you know, it's getting a little skinny kind of dog or cat, this is a great way to get the proteins up and get that, uh, get, get a little meat on those bones. Um, if you have an overweight, just lean it out a little bit. Don't put as much on there. Um, but it's a great way of adding to uh, your existing diet for your dog or cat, elevating uh, what they get because it's going to have a little more of the probiotics and prebiotics. Um, they even tote that it's improved appetite and digestion. That'll, it'll improve that in your dog or cat. Re, uh, relief from certain allergies. I, I haven't seen scientific proof on that, but they are boasting about that all over the place. A vibrant skin and coat, so that's saying that the omega-3s and fatty acids are high in here. Healthy teeth and gums, I've heard about that, where there's enzymes within the freeze-dried products that actually help clean uh, and keep clean the teeth and gums. Uh, greater stamina and vitality because of the high protein. You're adding a little more protein to their diet. And a healthy immune system because of, again, those prebiotics and probiotics. I love the marketing thing uh, for Stell and Chewy's. A little raw goes a long way. A little raw goes a long way. I love it. All right, well, we're out of time. It's been a lot of fun, as always. Ron Salisbury with Petland of Iowa City wants you to stop by and say hi. Petland of Iowa City on Lower Muscatine. Buy 10, get one free for their dog foods. You could also get 
$5 nail trims, and come play with the pups. It helps socialize them and gets them out of the kennels, and they enjoy it, so they're ready to go home with their family or possibly you, maybe you're their next family. Check them out at Petland of Iowa City. Ron, it's been fun. We'll talk to you next time, okay? Thank you very much. Check out PetlandIowaCity.com and KXIC.com. Check out our podcast page. Bye. <laughs>